The Bible says that God has not given us a spirit of fear, but of power and of love and of a sound mind. There's a lot of churches that, that closed this morning, and we're not here to cast judgment on them. They made the best decision for their congregation. They felt that that was the best decision that they made for and God forbid that we have to shut our doors, but they made that decision, and we support them in the decision that they made. One guy said this, because see, as a leader, you have to understand this. You're going to be criticized with whatever you do. They're going to get you whatever you, so as a leader, one, 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 one preacher said, listen, you, you got you to, he built for that. You got to understand that that's what come along with leadership. So you don't fold when you get ridiculed and when people persecute you or say things about you. Joe Osteen said he was going to keep his church open. And he got criticized and ridiculed. How you going to keep your church open? They called him insensitive. Because he going to keep his church open. Oh, you insensitive. So then the mayor suggested that he close his church. So we don't know if that's why he closed it. So he made a, an announcement that he was going to close his church. Then he got ridiculed and said that you don't have any faith. Where is your faith? So either way you cut it. They gonna get them. So you have to make the best decision for you. A decision to where you feel that God is speaking to you and you make that decision. And you stand on the decision that you make. Our trust is in God, our hope is in God. So I don't I don't shun anyone or, or, or look down on anyone who decided to close their churches. It was faith that took them to close their churches. They had to have faith. And it was faith for us to open our church. You understand what I'm saying? I thank God uh, just for who he is. Romans 8, 28 says, For all things work together for the good of those that love God and those that are called according to his purpose. Oftentimes we get to the other side and then we say all things work together for the good of, the, of those. We get to the other side of it. We come from the coronavirus and we look back and say, oh, yeah, all things, that even work. But you have to understand that in the midst of it, in the midst of what you're going through, right in the middle of coronavirus, right in the middle of people dying, that we don't understand it right now. We don't get it. We don't understand it. But even the coronavirus is working together for the good of those that love God. I don't know how. I don't know why. I don't know. But all things, not some things, not a couple of things. But we believe that even in the midst of this, that God is going to get the glory out of this. Somebody going to come to Jesus from this. Somebody going to come to know him through all of this. Some families going to come closer. It's going to be some families going to be able to spend some extra time together through this. So all of it. Some of y'all looking at me strange. Like how in the world is this? Because all things. You can't wait till you. It's easy to come out, Bianca, and say, oh, yeah. Oh, I went through that for a reason. But how about while you're in the midst of it? You got to know it then. So it can give you confidence to go through it to all got you in control. So some way, somehow, and even though I don't understand it, it's going to work together for good. Some way. Some way. Let's say this and we're going to introduce our panel. Look at Psalm 91. Psalm 91. Whoever dwells in the shelter of the Most High will rest in the shadow of the Almighty. I will say of the Lord, He is my refuge and my fortress, my God in whom I trust. Surely He will save you from the fowler's snare and from the deadly pestilence. He will cover you with his feathers, and under his wings you will find refuge. His faithfulness will be your shield and rampart. You would not fear the terror of night, nor the arrow that flies by day. I'm just going to read a couple more verses, I know you want the whole one, but we're just going to read a couple. Nor the pestilence that stalks in the darkness, nor the plague that destroys at midday. A thousand may fall at your side, 10,000 at your right hand, but it will not come near you. 
That is our prayer. God, don't let it come near us. We trust you. We bless your holy name, God. Our trust, our confidence is in you. Touch us, touch our city, touch our nation, touch us, bless us, keep us in the center of your will. We put our hope in you. Touch the world, touch those that are in China, touch all of anybody that's been affected by this, God. Our trust is in you. Our confidence is in you. We believe you. Do you have our attention? Yes, you have our attention. We put our trust in you. Innovation. Let's believe God. Let's trust God. Let's stand on his word. Good morning, good morning, good morning. You all may be seated. You all may be seated. All right, you all know ever so often we like to uh, gather and uh, take a seat across the stage and, and just dialogue a little bit about... Um, Sometimes it's just something that is either currently going on or um, about a series that we're coming out of. And I think probably we have had a lot of amazing series here. We've had a lot of amazing focuses um, where God has spoke through Pastor Myron and just um, put a lot of things on our hearts and our minds. But I think coming into this year, Can I Have Your Attention was major. Was it just me? No, no, no. Okay. Just want to check the crowd. You check the crowd. <laughs> so I, I feel like, so can I have your attention? I, I, I think God did exactly what he intended in getting our attention. Um, we went into the fast in January. And I think we talked a little bit about the fast. And we talked about how awesome the fast was. How it wasn't as difficult as some of the other fasts that we've done. Um, it was it was it was really a time of I think God allowing us to reflect on who He was and who He is in our lives, but also the things in our lives that might be getting in the way, the things in our lives that would probably cause our attention to not be focused on Him, but on other areas and little things in our lives. And for some of us, we like to categorize things. We like to say, "Well, I don't have big big sins in my life." So I'm good. Um, I don't have, you know, I'm not sleeping with anybody or I'm only sleeping with my spouse or I'm not smoking, I'm not drinking, I'm not clubbing, I'm not. But there could still be matters of the heart. There could still be bitterness. There could still be unforgiveness. There could still be, you know, those secret little sins, the ones that sometimes we don't think that people can see in our lives, but they can see it in the fruit in our lives. Amen. So um, I think what, if I can be honest, I think can I have your attention did that for me. There were things in my life or there were things going on, and I noticed that God did not have my full attention in some areas. There were some areas where I had shifted my focus, and I was more concerned about the problem or I was more concerned about the challenge or the issue than I was God. And so whenever... I focus on that, and whenever we focus on anything, of course, you know that that magnifies. It magnifies our problems. It magnifies our issues. And believe it or not, when our focus is not on God, it lessens his um, bigness or his greatness and his awesomeness in our lives because our focus has shifted. So these individuals on the stage um, have been asked to share a little bit about either themselves or just situations um, just about their lives. So and y'all know how we do on the panel. We just go in and we go for it. So I'm not going to call any names. Whoever just wants to jump in. Has there been a time when God was trying to get your attention and he got it? And go. <laughs> um, just, just even thinking about it, I wanted to kind of water it down. And, and kind of start at my, my adulthood. But when I really thought about it, I can remember as young as, as Kendall on this front row, God grabbing my attention. And I found myself coming to the altar over and over again after I heard the altar call from the preacher saying, Are you, if you don't know if you saved. And so I, I found myself coming to the altar over and over at that point. Now, that was him grabbing my attention, me not being able to articulate that, but understanding it now 
That's that's why I would say it started for me. And and it wasn't that I had anybody to take me under their wing and kind of groom me and teach me in this. And so there were periods at, at the age eight, at the age 13, at the age 18. So of, over a course of 12 years, by the time I was 20, I found myself giving myself completely over to God without turning back. And, and so it was it was like it was a process for me. And so I, I would definitely say th those periods of God grabbing my attention, not really understanding it, not, not having any knowledge, how to grow in God, you know, even at the age of 13, you know, giving my life over to God in the park, uh, I ran home to read the Bible. I read Genesis chapter 1. And that was it. And so <laughs> never picked it back up until age 20. But it was, it was, I know that it was that, that what God was stirring some things within me. So there were moments, times, just, and, and I guess if I'm hearing you right, there are times when God will um, just create um, opportunities for him to just kind of let you know who he is. Like, and, and that in, in essence is, I'm, I'm getting, I'm trying to get your attention. I'm trying to get focus on, on, on me. Okay, anybody else? So for me, um, it's a little different than Antoine. <clears throat> um, when I first got baptized, I had no clue what was going on. I was like seven years old. And me and my sister, my mom wanted us to get baptized just because she was joining a new church. Um, so I didn't really understand it, but I came to understand. And as we, you know, spent time in church, you know, just learned more and grew more. Um, but then when I got into my teenage years, late teenage years, um, specifically going off to college and things like that, I strayed away and decided to do things my own way. I was still in church, still in the gospel choir and everything, um, but still just completely straight away and was doing things uh, my own way. Now, can I stop you? Yes. What does that mean? I'm doing things my own way. Let's clarify that. Like, so what, what would that mean? I, um, as I came to learn about, you know, God's grace and mercy, it's like I over depended on that. I knew nothing I could do is going to pluck me out of his hand. So it was like, well, you know, I'll, um, you know, smoke and drink, go go to the club or whatever, um, and just pray afterwards and it'll be all right. Or, you know, have a boyfriend and do whatever I wanted to do. Um, and then as long as I went to church Sunday, I'm good. It even got to the place where it's like, well, come with me. And we could, <laughs> you know. Amen. Um, Amen. Really Tell the truth. Not being convicted um, by the word and just, you know, sinning just sinning yeah. and it, even my mind played tricks on me to the point where um it's just like the enemy was telling me um well you know you 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 can have your time to experience things you can try things out you'll be all right like you know you can you got time you get saved when you get grown and you get older it's time that's for very that. good that's um, very good and so it, it wasn't until you know i ended up getting pregnant my sophomore year in college um and you know all my, my friends kind of left me. The friends who depended on me for a ride to the club wasn't calling no more. Um, just just being honest. Yeah. And um, it, it wasn't until uh, my son, you know, it was a couple of times in his early life, he was born with a cleft palate. And so he almost died when he was born because they didn't catch it in the ultrasound. So when he was born, they didn't know it. They laid him on his back. And, you know, if you have a cleft palate, the roof of your mouth is missing. And so his, he swallowed his tongue and, you know, they caught him choking and, you know, brought him back. But it's like he could have died. And that's when it's almost like that tragedy started getting my life back on track. But that over the course of 11 months, um, I still was, you know, I had one foot in, one foot out. You know, I was real lukewarm. I wasn't really feeling my home church anymore because of church hurt and abandonment. People, I felt like, were judging me and all that kind of stuff. Um, and I had already been struggling with abandonment issues um, coming up because, you know, my mom was um, addicted to crack cocaine. And so bouncing from household to household, abandonment was an issue for me. Uh -huh. um, but at 11, when my son was 11 months, he, he got cleft palate repair surgery. It's supposed to be a quick, you know, 30 minutes to an hour is how long they said it, it would take. And there were complications afterwards. So um, they had to put him into a medically induced coma. 
He was laying there lifeless on the bed. And at that moment, it really was like it got to the place where I was in the hospital uh, for that whole week really by myself. Nobody really came to visit. My baby's father was doing whatever he wanted to do, wasn't there. Um, and so in that abandonment, it, I found myself like, God, where are you? Like, do you really love me? Are you really who you say you are? You know, I'm praying and, you know, my baby is laying here lifeless. Um, and in <clears throat> that, it was like a moment I was praying and then I look up and I see this man walking. I didn't really know him. It was my father's pastor. He came, he prayed over me. He spoke things that is, it was like, how do you know this? <laughs> like, God, really? Yeah. And he quoted a scripture, the scripture that saved my life. Um, Romans 12, I beseech you, therefore, brethren, by the mercies of God, that you present your body a living sacrifice, Hallelujah. holy and acceptable unto God. Be ye transformed by the renewing of your mind. And it was then, it's just like God snatched me up. And from wow. that point forward, I was sold out, fully dedicated. Um, he truly, truly got my attention. And there's been times where it's like, you know, you still have your struggles. I remember the in the crossover series, it's just like you get one, one thing that you overcome and then here's another one. Yeah, yeah. You just have those crossover seasons. Um, but it's just like, you know, it took that tragedy to just kind of snatch me up. And it's, um, I'll say this and I'll be done, <laughs> but it's like um, we always see God as a deliverer and, you know, just holy and merciful and, oh, he's such a good, good God. But sometimes we don't like to talk about how he's also a disciplinarian. Yes. And he disciplines those who he loves. Well, all and right, so Marion. We, we got to embrace those seasons, too. And it, you know, I did kind of feel guilty, like, God, are you going to kill my baby because I'm Ratchet, yeah, yeah. <laughs> for real. But it's like he used that to to discipline me and give me what I needed for that next season. That is so. It was so. I know. That was a lot of. That was that was a lot of good stuff in there. There was the juice. It was. It was so much good stuff in there. Just even from. Of course, I want to go to the last one. Just about her saying that. You know. Listen, I love to to. When I think about it, I, I ordered a, a book just about um, uh, something that we're getting ready to do, one of the Bible studies, just letting you know, in coming forth in the, in the summer for the ladies, um, just about the, the names of God and it, how it just talks about the character of God and how we do sometimes, you know, based off of sometimes how we were raised, we see God sometimes very narrow. And he is so much bigger than the way that we see him. And there are so many sides to who he is and, and his character. And I mean, it's just, it's blowing my mind. The, the, doing this, the reading myself, it's just blowing my mind that yes, God is sovereign. God is sovereign. <laughs> Meaning I do what I want to do. I am God. I, I, I do what I want to do. I'm not, I'm not bound by even your thought or your idea of who I am. You're going to come up and get to know who I am. I'm not going to change to conform to what you think that I am. I'm not going to do it. You are going to come up to meet where I am. And there are going to be different moments and times in your life where you will be introduced to different sides of who he is. And I, that's just so, that is so beautiful and so awesome. And, um, and just even how he, him, him uh, just allowing you to go through all of that with your baby and I'm still getting your attention. I am, I am, I am here with you. And sometimes it's sudden when he does it. Sometimes he snatches you. But for a lot of us, if we could really reflect back on those moments when he was getting our attention, it's been at a, a little bit at a time. I allowed this to happen. Okay, you didn't respond like that. All right. Here comes something else. Oh, you still didn't respond. All right. Because he's merciful. And he's our loving, he's a loving father. Yeah. He's a loving father. It is never God's desire. Never. And I know how the enemy plays because he played with me like that early, early on in my salvation, that I would never be good enough, that I, my works would never be good enough, that I had to earn, that I almost had to earn his love, that I had to be, I had to be perfect almost in order. And I had to make sure that my, my thoughts were right. Everything I said was right. Everything I did was right. Well, that was a lot of pressure. 
There was a lot of pressure, and I lived in a place of condemnation because it was impossible to do. It was impossible. So living with guilt and just shame for having a wrong thought like, well, God, I'm sorry, I'm just not saved because I had that thought. And it's like, okay, you do what the word tells you to do with the thought. And so just coming into knowledge of who he is and you grow in that. But that was, that was so awesome. That was good. I'm, I'm, yeah, come on, Miss Angela. Um, oh, well, I expected, I expected to come from the perspective of a seasoned saint who, uh, as many of you know, well, just as a seasoned saint coming from a place of complacency, in your gift or your anointing and all that. But as I sat here, God took me back to when he really, really got my attention. And I just got done having sex. And I remembered, and I laid there in the bed and I cried. And I remembered my son's father has shared this scripture with me. And that was the scripture that God brought back to my mind in those moments, in, those, in that moment where I was, <laughs> and it, it's Galatians 5 and 1, it says, Brethren, if a man is, overt is, that, yeah, is overtaken in any trespass, ye who are spiritual, no, that ain't right. That ain't right. That is not right. Uh, it's Galatians 5 and 1, yes. I think I made a mistake and went to the verse before. But it talked about, there it is. For freedom did Christ set us free. Stand fast, therefore, and be not entangled again in the yoke of bondage. And he was just letting me know that this, all of this stuff you're dealing with, the issues. That, look, you're entangled in a yoke of bondage. You're not free. I was going to church. I, you know, I had my period of time where I got out of church and was doing my own thing, wasn't going to church, and, and all of that. But he said, I don't want you entangled anymore in that. And how he got my attention is crazy because it was, it was my son's father. It was my son's father who brought, and, and, and I grew up in a holiness church. What he, he grew up in a Baptist church. What are he telling me something for? Yeah. And we, we, I'm just saying we was, we was, you know, we had, and we weren't together at the time. That's what I'm saying. We weren't even together at the time. It was, he was picking up my son and all that, and, and God was, he, he just spoke this scripture. Now, I don't, I don't even remember what was surrounding why he even spoke this to me, but it was this very scripture that let me know that I am, I really am free in Christ, and there's, I don't have to be bound by this, I don't, this emotional roller coaster that I'm on with this person and with that person and thinking that this is going to be the time that I get married or this is going to, look, you, look, I need you free. You bound, and you don't even know you bound. The stuff you doing, you doing it out of a place of being bound and not out of a place of freedom. I've called you to freedom. And so walk in, and so that was a time, and I, I, I don't think I'll ever forget that moment. I don't, I don't remember. I can't tell you the date that I got. That, that I got baptized, I can't tell you the date that I gave, I walked the aisle and I gave the Lord, I can't give you nan date, I'm just saying. But that day, that one was when he got my attention. And I, I have never forgot, I can't tell you what date on the calendar was, but I know what he said. He said, don't you be, don't be entangled in this. And see, I believe that that was a warning for me. I believe that that was a warning. I wasn't necessarily so promiscuous, but but I, I look look here, <laughs> look here. <laughs> a sister did a thing, you, yeah. and so <laughs> don't laugh to her, don't laugh to her. But I'm just saying, I, I have been molested as a child. And see, some people go, you either, a lot of times people go far left or far, far right. right. That's and right. Either you're going to shut down and you don't never do nothing with nobody, even yep. your husband. Yep. Or you, you go out there and you be kind of loose. Yeah. And I didn't think I was that. Mm -hmm. But I was living like that. Mm -hmm. 
had, I, I, God, I, he, he just had to get my attention. And this very man who God used, uh, and so we can't discount baby dad and them either, y'all. Because mm -hmm. there's some, young, I'm just trying to say, sometimes we shut off anybody that God can use to speak to us. Yeah. And God can get your attention mm. through anybody. This very person I've been with, I'm trying to change his mind with the, you understand what I'm saying. And he they told me he was finna get married. And I, I uh, you know, and so, you know, that's when, you know, I'm just saying, I'm just, I'm just keeping it real. Because, because God had to get my attention. It was the very same one who I was sinning with, yeah. who God used to speak a word of scripture. I don't know what had happened in his life, but he spoke that to me. And, and, and ever since then. I've been on a journey to keep myself, my body, and present it as that living sacrifice, holy and acceptable unto God. It ain't been easy, but I, that, he got my attention. He got my attention. So during the, the series, Pastor Myron talked about guarding your attention and how important it is to guard your attention because whatever you give attention to grows. We just gonna let it marinate. <laughs> so if we're giving our attention and our focus to the unimportant, those things are gonna be magnified in our lives, in our minds, in our thoughts, in our in our our, our words. And of course, out of the abundance of the heart, your mouth speaks. So those things that's on your heart, it come that's on your heart, it's gonna come out of your mouth. So tell me. And I know, I'm sure that we've all had moments and times, um, but tell me of, of a time, or just tell me how you managed to keep your attention on God, on God guarded. How do you keep it guarded? I'll go back to um, at the age 20 when I said I, I fully sold out to God. Uh, I was telling Life Group just the other day how uh, I was at this job, and, and God is changing my life, and God spoke these words to me, don't allow them to see the old you, uh, and, and I, because it, before then, I couldn't stand gospel music, I couldn't, I couldn't relate to gospel music, gospel music just, it didn't have that, that oomph to it, you know, I was that, I was that guy, and so I, I didn't feel it, but when he spoke those words, I had to play uh, 95.7. <laughs> and so I had to listen at 95.7, but I also was listening at uh, 1480, you know, old school. I came up around the season saying so. And, uh, yeah, I did. <laughs> <laughs> so it, it was like I began to to listen at it, and it was at that, at that time while I was listening because I'm, I'm trying to show uh, the people on my job the new me. You know, I'm still, I'm still in that midst of transformation. I wasn't completely there. But while I was listening at, you know, this music, and I began to kind of relate to it like, okay, they talking about Jesus. You know, so at this point, I began to learn a little about the Bible. And, and so now because I know scripture, and when I started listening to, you know, gospel music, it was like, okay, I, I, I understand this now a little better. And it was, it was just kind of continuing to show the new me at my job. Of course, when I left the job, I did my thing, but it was just a matter of the people who didn't know the old me, they shouldn't know the old me. And so it was like, how do I continue to stay in this vein? So my conversation started changing. I started reading my word on the job uh, unapologetically. I was reading it on my break time. And so this was me uh, developing new habits. And so God began to develop new habits that I began to kind of embrace so that I can continue to, to show, you know, what it really means to keep my attention on him. Had I not kept my attention on him, then I could have easily kind of been in and out. And so I, I found myself waking up early in the morning, reading the scriptures again throughout the day. I was fighting to stay up reading the scripture. So I'm reading the Bible, and I'm, I'm tired. I get past a few verses. I'm asleep. But I was fighting. And so when I wake back up, I'm right back at it. And, and I'm, I'm talking about go right back to sleep. But I get back in, and I'm like, because I felt like I was fighting against something. And so I was constantly saying, hey, let, let me keep at this because I want to know what this means. I, I don't want to allow 
my weariness, the, the weariness of my flesh to keep me from getting what God is trying to put in me. And so I kept that vein. And over the course, early in the morning, on my break, throughout the middle of the day, and before I laid down. So this became a habit for me. And, and God really began to change my life. I'm talking about like instantly as I read, I didn't even realize that I had stopped cussing. I didn't realize that I stopped drinking. I didn't realize that I, I stopped hanging around the same crowd until somebody came to me and they were like, oh, you think you, you, you know, you better than us? You, you know, you, your, your conversation has changed. I'm like, no, I'm the same twin. And so I didn't even realize what the word of God had done to me. You know, and it was like, it, it was, felt like it was overnight because it happened so fast for me. Yeah. But it was that consistency yes. of, of staying at it. Mm -hmm. yeah. And anything and anybody that you spend time with, you begin to take mm -hmm. on characteristics from them. Yes. It is funny how when we get married, I, when, when we got married, I picked up some of Myron's lingo. <laughs> I didn't talk like this before I got married. <laughs> I, did, I didn't, some of these things I did not say before I got married. So I got married and then, or you pick up their mannerisms because, you know, so now I, you know, call people a chicken fish. You know, I, I wouldn't, I wouldn't use that type of terminology to describe somebody who's not being cool at the moment. But now you're a chicken fish because that's the terminology my saved husband uses. Amen. <laughs> Marion. Um, in the same vein, talking about developing habits. When we were at Breathe this past October, it was early in the morning. I had gone down, you know, just was kind of sitting and relaxing and saw Monique coming, running back down the beach. And I'm <laughs> like, you know, she came, came up and we were talking. I was like, you really looking good, girl. You done lost all this weight. Like, you know, what are you doing? And she got to talking about um, system over self. Yeah. And um, just talking about how, you know, she sets her early morning routine. Mm -hmm. Now, I was here for the same sermon series, <laughs> and I heard it. Me too. And it sounded so good. And I left with every intention, yeah. you know, to yeah. apply some of those things. Yes. Yes. But when she said and just seeing, <laughs> I'm just being yes. honest, how it worked for her, just setting an, an early morning routine. Some of the most successful people do it. And so I went back. I even listened to the sermon, <laughs> the, the first sermon of that ser sermon series again. Um, and I just started, you know, my morning routine. And I found that waking up first, you know, praying, reading the word. Um, sometimes I'll even, you know, jot some things down it helped me get my focus where it needed to be on God mm -hmm. um, because it's just like as a mother and, you know, having a full-time job and all things that pull at me, I can get so busy where if I don't wake up and give it to him first, it, sometimes it won't happen. That's right. That's um, right. And, you know, you love the Lord, want to stay connected to him, mm -hmm. but those quick, you know, in the car prayers, is they don't get it the same way mm -hmm. as having a routine, setting it, and letting that be. You know, you giving your first fruits, yeah. um, the first time in the morning, giving it back to God. Yeah. It really, really helped me. Mm -hmm. um, and eventually, I'll get to the place like Monique, <laughs> where maybe I'll wake up thirty minutes earlier and start exercising. <laughs> yes, yes, Amen. but you know, yeah. guarding your attention. Keeping your attention focused on him, just for me, giving the first fruits and having that morning routine. Mm -hmm. That's very good. Miss Angela, you want to take a second? Um, for me, um, three things. One, when pastor sets the prayer three times a day, mm -hmm. I yes. have kept in that vein. Mm -hmm. That was a way of God getting my attention. Mm -hmm. And I wanted, I, you know, so, so I haven't changed that my alarms are still set. Mm -hmm. I still get up at five something in the morning, five between five. And I've, I've even started, I've written it down. So every day of the week now has its own agenda mm -hmm. and I've got it posted up on the wall. Mm -hmm. What the agenda for the day is, what I'm going to do, what I'm supposed to be covered, whether it's the book or working on the songs or whatever it is God has given me to do. Um, so that... And then I'll speak to, uh, you know, just staying in, on, staying focused and doing it. And I've even seen where I kind of get like, no, you're you're going to do this because first of all, because 
God deserves this. All that he has done in your life, all that you have been delivered from and set free from, God deserves this time. And if I was at the doctor's office with my mom, uh, and I saw this man. He had come outside. I, I, I don't know where he was at first, but I saw him. He reached in his car, and he put something down on the ground and knelt and turned, got down on the ground and prayed right then and there. And I'm saying, if somebody, and I don't know who he, I don't know what religion or what faith he was, but I'm just saying, if so, but generally what I have seen is a, a, another faith do that, a Muslim do that. And so I'm saying, if they can give, yeah. Uh, uh, what's his name? Uh, the, the, the Allah, yeah. If they can do, <laughs> if they can do that for Allah, certainly the one who sacrificed his life for me and yet lives and still seated at the right hand of the Father, interceding for me, this little girl, surely I can give him my time like he deserves. So I, that was important to me. Uh, the third, I mean, sec the second thing was when in that season of my life when. I was working to overcome and still walk in celibacy and a life committed to God. There were a couple of things I had to understand. One, first of all, the feeling don't last but a little minute. It don't last but a little while. And if I can give it, that's just like a craving. It don't last but a little while. And if you, if you set a system in place to get you beyond that moment and not respond and live your life and mess yourself up in the moment, if you understand that this is a temporary thing, this yes. is a temporary feeling, yes. emotion, whatever it is, then I am not going to, to change the tra whole trajectory of my life. I'm not going to uproot the blessing of God on my life because of something I feel for a little second. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And so, you know, and it's, that's, that's scientifically proven. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And so, you know, just understanding that this is just a temporary moment. Mm -hmm. and, I, and I had to literally speak to myself. I tell my body, you don't run nothing. You belong to the Lord. Mm -hmm. I will honor God with my body. I give my, you yeah. understand? I had to talk to my body parts. Mm -hmm. I had to talk to my mind when yes. thoughts came. I had yes. to talk. And, yes. and that's how I, he kept my attention. Mm -hmm. It's God, I, God, I give you me. I give you my mind, yeah, I, yeah. and I had to make my mind think about what it was supposed to think about That's right. and not what it wanted to think about. That's right. That's because right. it wanted to go there. I'm just telling you that. Mm -hmm. I was in my 20s mm -hmm. when I made the decision to be celibate and wait until I got married. In, in that moment, when I had that moment, it was then I realized I, I'm not going to do this anymore. Mm -hmm. I keep on messing myself mm -hmm. up. I'm not going to give myself to nobody else mm -hmm. unless it's my husband. I'm not doing it. Yep. And so I had to talk. I had to decide on the destination. And then when I came to myself, I had to decide what I was, how I was going to get there. I had mm -hmm. to decide that I'm going to do this and whatever it takes for me to honor God, to glorify God, to obey him. If I got to talk to myself, if I got to tell myself, girl, you better sit your little hot self down. Whatever I got to do, I, I, I got to do that because I'm desperate for him. And mm -hmm. I mean that. Mm -hmm. And so th th those are those, th that's it for me. And mm -hmm. then what Pastor said, about the about this, this Sunday when I got jacked up in the collar, mm -hmm. uh, first Sunday of the year when I got jacked up clean, mm -hmm. I got jacked up and pinned up against the wall. Molly mm -hmm. walked that Sunday. God came for me. <laughs> I'm, I'm telling you, He came for me. And, but but here's the thing, He knew. He, I, he got my attention. Mm -hmm. God, I'm focusing on you, and I'm doing what you told me to do. But. This man of God didn't know, hadn't said one word to him. But last Sunday, let me tell you what God did. Hallelujah. He didn't know I was struggling with, I think I'm probably getting on people's nerves. I'm probably, you know, because I'm, I, I mean, I'm going to stalk my purpose like a deranged fan. Do you hear me? Mm -hmm. And so I'm, I probably am getting on some people's nerves. Mm -hmm. I, and that's what I felt like. But the man of God called it out last week and said, look, don't you take it with the same, with the same fervor, with the same strength, mm -hmm. with the same that you, that, that, that you left out of here with that first Sunday. God said, don't you relent. Don't you mm -hmm. let. And so it was, he, he, because he got my attention, he could say that to me. Mm -hmm. 
Mm-hmm. I'm done. Mm-hmm. He can say that to me, and I mm-hmm. and I want it. I want, and see, I'm I'm that person that says, God, be. I don't mind tough love. Yeah. yeah. I I don't mind. You got to not mind tough love. Yeah. When people come and give you a word of truth, you got to understand that God chases those He loves. And so, if He giving me something that's hard for me. But I know it's truth. I got to do the thing that I know is true because I am sold out to truth. I'm sold out to truth. And that's the bottom line. And come what may. And I often pray and say, whatever it looks like to my flesh, whatever it feels like to my flesh, God, I want you glorified. And that's my bottom line. That's my bottom line. I want you glorified. Hallelujah. 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 You've got one minute each. You've got one minute each. I'm going to share this scripture. Proverbs 4, chapter 4, verse 23 through, I will end it at 26. Above all else, above everything else, guard your heart, for everything you do flows from it. Keep your mouth free of perversity. Keep corrupt talk far from your lips. Let your eyes look straight ahead. Fix your gaze directly before you. I will end there. You've got one minute. I want you to speak to the individual in the audience. Speak to you sitting in the audience with that scripture. With that scripture. No particular order, but we are closing our service, and you have one minute to do so. Ain't gonna lie, I can't hardly remember scripture. What you say now? <laughs> it's fine. It's okay. <laughs> Above all else, guard your heart for everything gotcha. you do flows from it. Gotcha. Keep your keep your mouth of keep your mouth free of perverse perversity. Keep in essence, guard your heart. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Keep your mouth clean. <laughs> Keep corrupt talk from your lips and let your eyes look straight ahead. Fix your gaze directly before you. There are se- um, um, Come on. There are seasons in my life, and, and really it has become my lifestyle that I, I often, like Pastor said, I can't look at everything. I can't listen to everything. And I, I remember I, I, I can't do it. You know, some stuff I'm okay with. I, I feel like I'm, eh. But, but there are times when I recognize that I'm struggling, I realize that I have opened a door and let the enemy in somewhere to influence what I'm, what I'm doing or how I'm feeling. I've let him in. So, so I have to go back and I have to say, no, I got to guard my heart. So I got to guard my mind. I got to guard my thoughts. I got to, the Bible says, whatsoever things are lovely or pure, whatsoever things of good report, uh-huh. think on these things. Uh-huh. So I could get negative. I could think about, yep. and, and I did not get healed in my body for seven and a half, eight years. There was not healing in my body until I begin to speak what the word of God said and not rehearse and nurse what I was feeling. Amen. There was meaning. I got to a point in my life where I agreed with God. I got to a point in my life when I said from this moment on, I will agree with God. Whatever he says about me, I am in agreement with that. Anything contrary to that, I cannot take on as mine because that is not truth. We love to talk about my truth. I'm speaking my truth. If your truth is not in line with God's truth, then it's not truth. It's not truth. Um. I was listening to a sermon, I believe it was Mike Todd, and I posted the the quote on Facebook because it just stuck with me. But he said, um, God is not limited by our small thinking. Mm -hmm. He's limited by our small obedience. Um, And I was like, my God, but when you just read the scripture about guarding your heart, it took me back to Christmas. My boys got a PS4 or something. And they wanted to be so careful with it and took it off the box so gently. They ripped the paper off. They didn't care about that. But when they saw what it was, they treated it with care. They wanted to take it out and read the instructions and follow, you know, my, what does it say? I, no, don't connect it like that. Let's read the instructions. And so that just connecting 
that quote in that scripture. When you're guarding something that's important to you, when I'm guarding my attention and, and guarding my focus on God, I'm going to be so careful with it. I'm going to follow his instructions, and I'm going to do what it says. Um, so it's in that obedience. Um, yeah. That's so beautiful. How many of you remember when you first got saved, when you first came into knowledge of who Christ was? Do you remember how protective you were of their relationship? Do you remember how it was like that PS4? I don't want anybody to touch it. I don't want anybody to uh, listen. I'm, I'm, I'm real sensitive right now. Just the Lord is, is, has done something in my life. Like I, I hear him. I, I, he, he knows me like God knows who I am. I know him, but he knows me. He loves me in spite of me. And I want to do everything in my power to protect it. I want to, if friends, that's why some of us, when we come into knowledge of who Christ is and we walk in this thing, we lose people. Because at that moment, we're protecting. We're protecting it. So if your conversation is not about, I'm not saying we got to be talking Christ all day long. But I am saying that we got to at least be going in the same direction. And our conversation is going to guide where we go. And so I just... You, we, we protect it. And they, just like they were guarding their PS4, we guard what's important to us. We guard it. We guard what we hear. We guard what we see. Amen. Brother Antoine. So it made me think about 1 Corinthians 13. Love is patient. Love is kind. Yeah. It does not envy. It does not boast. It is not proud. It does not dishonor others. Mm. It is not self-seeking. It is not easily angered. It keeps no record of wrongs. Love does not delight in evil, but rejoices with the truth. It always protects, always trusts, always hopes, always preserves. Love never fails. And so it, it, we have to love each other. It doesn't matter what people say to you. It doesn't matter what they talk about. It doesn't matter how they get on your nerves. It doesn't matter what you feel in your own heart, what you think. Because a lot of time, a lot of our thoughts are just what they are, they're thoughts. It's not even real thoughts. And so the enemy will play tricks on you mm -hmm. and allow your heart to get damaged by some things that you perceive. Yep, and it's not even real. Yep. And so just keep moving. Let it roll on. <laughs> you say let it roll on. Yeah. And, and let me love you anyhow. I want, I want to get to know you for you. And so it, people can talk about you. They can tell me anything about you. Mm -hmm. But until I know you for myself, right. then I, I won't allow that to get in my heart to have bitterness. Yeah. To allow me to talk yep. about you the way other people talk yep. about you, yep. but to stay positive. You think the best of people at all times. Yeah. That's, that's what the word calls us to do. Yeah. Is I want to think the best of you at all times. I don't always do it, but I'm always thinking about this scripture. Mm -hmm. Is that I should do it even when I'm not doing it. Mm -hmm. And so being convicted by that mm -hmm. and knowing that if I do that, then we'll become the best of friends in any given situation. When people think we all will fall out, we'll mm -hmm. be the best of friends. Yeah. And I can say some things to you yep. out of love and we not fall out about it. Yeah. And so can yeah. we continue to love each other through yeah. the hard time, through the time when I don't feel like me and you cool. Oh. You know, when, when, when I don't want to, I don't want to say nothing to you. I don't want you to say nothing to me. Yeah. But if I'm going to be a Christian, then I got to suck it up. Yeah. I, I, I got to keep, I got to keep my eyes on the prize yeah. because if we going to be Godly brothers and sisters, I mean, it's important that we keep love in the midst of it. Amen. Let's give it up for our panel this morning. If everyone could please stand as we close out our service this morning.